Well, hi guys, it's Corinna popping in again. I was just here a couple of hours ago doing my weekly training and I wanna say hello again real quick. I'm gonna do a bonus episode today um, that goes along with the first training, which was all about obstacles that your customer, potential customers are facing that are keeping them from buying. And I wanted to make this really practical and kind of do a case study and pretend that I am someone who might want to purchase uh, some grass-fed beef, maybe join a CSA or maybe purchase a side of beef or something like that. So I want you to see how these objections work in real life. And I want you to imagine if, you know, if I were a customer that was thinking about it, what would be the hangups for me? What are the roadblocks and the speed bumps that are keeping me from buying? And as I walk through this with you, you're gonna see some examples of things that you could create if you are a uh, beef producer, some examples of content that you could create that's gonna help me answer these questions, that's gonna help me overcome these objections. So this is just a bonus video that goes along with the one that I just did today if you wanna see how this might work in action. So. Let's pretend that I'm a potential customer. Um, I've actually thought about getting a side of beef from uh, Weber Ranch, who is uh, one of our local producers out here. And honestly, I always just keep pushing it off. And you know, they're friends of ours, so it should make it even more easy for me to just be like, hey, tell me more about this, how does this work? But there are all kinds of feelings of overwhelm when I think about beginning this process. So this might be really instructional for you because I feel like I am kind of a good lead. Like I fit their profile. I'm someone that's a foodie. I, would, I like to eat good food. I'm all about the organic movement. Um, but what is it that's keeping me from actually making the move and looking into it more fully? So this kind of deep dive into my head as a potential customer avatar might give some of you meat producers an interesting bird's eye view of what some of your potential customers might also be struggling with. And it may be giving you some ideas of what you can do to remove those obstacles. So I'm just gonna be honest. I made a pretty lengthy list of some of the reasons that are um, overwhelming me, some of the things that are keeping me from moving forward in this process. Not in any particular order, but here we go. And if you are a grass-fed beef producer and you're trying to find more people to buy your uh, meat, then you maybe should write these down and think about what can I do to overcome these objections. Okay, so here's the question that I have as somebody who's never done this before. How many pounds are in a typical cow. Please don't laugh at me, okay? I grow vegetables. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know how heavy a typical cow is, so I don't even know what kind of poundage we're talking about. So when I say I wanna buy a cow, I wanna get half a cow, in my mind I'm like, huh, how many pounds is that? So you gotta answer that question for me somewhere. <clears throat> so what should I be, exp not just that, not just this is how much you're gonna get in a delivery, but what does a typical family eat in a year, like how many pounds do does a typical family go through as far as ground beef uh, in a typical year? I don't know that, and if I knew that, if I had some sort of baseline, it might make it easier for me to make a decision about whether I need a whole cow, a half cow, a quarter cow, all right? And then how long does it take for that family to get through that product, um, AKA how long is this going to be in my freezer, right? Uh, how long is this going to be taking up valuable real estate in my freezer? Because I need to plan for that. And how big should my freezer be? These are all like questions that kind of go around this, this idea of what's the poundage, okay? Second thing, what are the different cuts in the cow? Now you probably know this one. This is probably the first one you thought of, okay? Now I know about ground beef. I know about chuck roast, okay? I know about beef stew tips. Um, and I know about the steaks. That's it, folks. I don't really cook any other pieces of meat right now. When I go to the grocery store even and I see them there in the little freezer, chest freezer, I'm a little like, what is that even for? Uh, so that is another big hang up. It's like, I'm not even sure what the cuts are that come with the cow. So there's a huge educational leap that still needs to happen for me to warm me up so that I feel like I understand the anatomy of the cow in the first place. And not just 
you know, what are the different cuts and pieces, but like, how do you use them? So I don't wanna get stuck with a whole bunch of product that I don't know how to use. And so that is a hang up for me as a potential beef uh, consumer. Like, uh, what would I make with all those other things? You've gotta give me some ideas so that I feel comfortable and ready to make that purchase. Um, you know, I look at this as a really big investment. I know it's gonna be a lot of money. And so I'm worried that I'm gonna make the wrong decision about you know, which cuts to even use. That was a photo bomb, that's my husband. <laughs> um, so that's another thing going through my head, just like, am I gonna make the right decision about which cuts I even put on my cut list? Um, I would also say that if you can make a recommendation for what should even be on my first cut list. Like when I download that and uh, copy it, uh, try to fill it out, I'm gonna be overwhelmed. And that whole process of trying to figure out what, what, what I should even check mark, I don't even know where to start. So uh, if you can just, as a, as a meat producer, be like, hey, beginner, first timer, here's what you should get. Huh, that would be like a gold mine for me. So maybe you're already doing that, but that's something as a newbie, a uh, huge obstacle for me, feel overwhelmed by that process. So if you can make the decision easy and break it down, tell me what to buy the first year, I'll probably follow your recommendation. Um, show me what an actual cut list looks like. So I think that would be a great idea for a lead magnet. Um, make, make them have to give you your email address to, to even get that cut list in their hands. Or you could even do like a three-part video series where you teach people how to translate the cut list and how to use it and how to order from it and where you kind of do a lot of education. So each video might be five minutes long. And at the end of it, the goal would be this person knows how to fill out a cut list and how to decide which cuts of meat are best for their family, okay? Um, what do the cuts look like? So when I see this list, and I see a whole bunch of words that I don't know, um, help me understand before I even get to this point what they are and what they're used for, what the different pieces are used for, because I wanna feel more equipped. Listen, here's the thing, I feel stupid when I read the cut list and I'm like, half of these, I don't even know what they are. Do you know what goes through my mind when I realize that I don't even know what half of those are? It makes me think, you're not ready for this, Corinna. You're not ready for this, you don't even, know how what half of these cuts of meat are and how to use them this is product isn't for you yet okay so that's a very real objection if you can get a customer to feel like they know what to do with the stuff or what what it even looks like that's going to be a big step forward and they'll be more you know more ready once they see the big list be like yeah i know what all that is i'm ready to buy um the difference between grass-fed and conventionally raised, like I know that obviously one's more healthy, but I don't really know much beyond that. So I feel like that could be also a whole nother piece of education that you could create. You could create a whole email just about that or a video just about that. Um, I've also heard rumors that you have to cook it differently, um, that it's chewier, um, that it even tastes different and that how you cook it really affects, it kind of helps you counteract some of those features. So that sort of scares me. I'm not scared, scares me is not the right word. It confuses me and it makes me pause and go, wait a minute, so I'm gonna have to learn a whole nother skill once I get this cow so that it actually tastes good. That becomes a, that's a roadblock for me, okay? So if, again, if you can address that in some way with some education on the front end so that I feel comfortable or maybe you give me a chance to, to practice with some of this meat um, at a smaller risk level so that I get used to playing with it and um, knowing how to make it taste good, then I'm a little more comfortable with, yeah, I think I can handle the whole cow now. Uh, obviously, another big objection is probably the financial one. That's a lot of money up front. Um, but not just that, maybe maybe you would come back with, with you know some kind of countermeasure and be like, actually, that's... Here's, here's how the payment works though. Maybe you can make me feel better once you explain to me how the investment is a good one. Um, the payment process though is definitely another hang up for me too. I'm super confused um, as to like hang weight. I know there's something I think called hanging weight. Hang, uh, now see, I'm probably looking stupid, um, but there, that, that you have to like let it hang and then there's a difference between that and what you actually end up. Then there's like, is there a butcher fee? Like at the end of the day, like don't confuse me. At the end of the day, what am I paying? Like make it 
really stupid simple for me. And if you can just take out the butcher fee entirely, just stick it in the total price and just give me the price per pound. Like that's what I wanna know. So that when I see you're gonna get 200 pounds or 400 pounds or whatever it is, then I'm just gonna be able to do the simple math and figure out what I'm gonna to have to pay, okay? Um, and then just, yeah, what is that average cost? When someone, I mean, I could probably figure that out if I ask a customer, right, who's done it before and be like, hey, so what do you pay total at the end of the day? Uh, I wanna know at the end of the day what I'm gonna pay. So if you can put that somewhere. The average person spends this much when they get an order of beef from us, a side of beef. Super helpful for me to budget. Um, another, another thought that I wrote down here is, what are the main decisions that I need to make um, in the, I call this the plan. Like, I don't even know where to begin, okay? I kinda wanna look into this. I kinda wanna maybe purchase a half of a cow. I don't know if it should be a quarter cow, half cow, full. I don't know. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. So that is a huge barrier for me too. So someone needs to be like, step one, Corinna, download the cut list. Maybe that's not step one, but like what is, what are the different pieces in this process and make it simple, make it no less than five, no wait, no more than five, <laughs> sorry. No more than five, keep it really simple because you don't wanna confuse your customer and show me what I need to do and make sure that I see that step five is that I'm enjoying my product in my home, right? <clears throat> um, the process, like how does the cow actually end up on my plate? I don't have a good idea of that and I think that that's not, that's not a super big barrier, but at some point I'm gonna to wanna to know that information. So do you handle it all at your farm or is it getting shipped off somewhere else to be butchered? And how much time does it stay there before it comes back to me? And what's, this, what's the amount of time from the time I say, press go and say, let's work together. How much time am I gonna to have to wait until I finally get my product? So that again, so that I can plan. I don't know the answer to that. So it's making it hard for me to move forward. Um, show me a picture of the final packaged product. I feel like this would be also a really helpful thing. Um, I want to see the volume. Like if I'm getting a whole cow, I want to see how much space that takes up. Put it in the back of a car and take a picture of it. Will it fit in my trunk? Um, because that's going to help me see like, holy crap, I have to buy a giant freezer just for this. Like these are the, the things I'm looking for. Like visually, spatially, I want to see the entire package and what it looks like, so take a picture of it or do a video of that. Um, how do I actually pick it up? Not super clear about that either. I would probably figure that out if I researched though, but these are all just questions spinning in my mind and it just, it's, I had, I'm on my 17th question, you guys. So as you can see, I am overwhelmed by the confusion and the obstacles. There are so many questions that is, it's, is it any wonder that I haven't moved forward on this because I need someone to break it down for me and begin to educate me in this process. Um, and the last one is just teach me what grass-fed production looks like so that I can really appreciate the benefits. Um, kind of goes back to like, what's the difference between grass-fed and, and conventional, but I'm not sure that I can fully appreciate how much extra work it is or what are the inputs, what, what are the things that you have to do differently that cause it to be such a more, more premium product so that I can feel good about my purchase so that I can feel like, yeah, this is why I'm spending so much more. Um, if that somehow gets communicated to me, I'll feel a lot better about spending the extra money um, than if I just went the conventional route. Okay, so that's just my list of 17 things. <laughs> Are you overwhelmed? I'm doing this to just show you uh, in a real world case study example, what someone who's thinking about a, a product in the agricultural world might be thinking in their head. And there are so many opportunities here for you to create content, whether it's a video or a take a photograph or do a three part quick video series where you teach something or you have an email sequence of 10 emails that you know come out and slowly break down each of these objections or um, you could do a lead magnet. There's tons of lead magnet ideas in here that you could initially get someone to trade their email address for. So I hope that this was helpful uh, for you to just kind of get an idea of how thinking through a product and its objections that your customer might have will help you 
um, actually come up with ideas for content you can even post on your, on your so social media pages or content you can put in an email sales sequence, content you can put into a video uh, series on YouTube that people binge watch to learn about your product. Um, think through the obstacles, the frequently asked questions that your prospect has and then start making content that answers them. And I promise you that once you create all of that and you put it into the right order, um, so that your customer goes through that journey in the right scope and sequence, it will make a huge difference. It will grease the wheels, open the doors, and your customers, more of your customers, will start taking out their wallets. Hope this was helpful for you. Have a great week, and I'll be back next week for another marketing makeover. Bye.